I'm going to give you a build for each survivor class in the game. That way, no matter who you pick, you have a solid build and you don't have to worry whether or not you're picking the right things. Okay. I'm also going to tell you why we pick what we pick. That way you can understand it a bit better and you can make your own decisions that'll match your own play style. Okay. And don't worry. I know you might not be level 25 on any of your characters here. So I'm going to tell you what matters the most first, and then you can build out your character as you see fit. So this here is the build I've been running with Cheryl. And as a rule of thumb, whenever we go through builds, the way I look at builds in video games is take what you're good at and make it better. Make it stronger, make it faster. <laughs> so in this case here, your job as a support is to stay alive and to keep everybody else alive. You're not a big damage dealer. You're not big at dodging. Your job is just to make sure everybody else is doing their job better. So with that in mind, what we're going to do is focus on our economy because that's what support characters tend to be. They tend to make everybody's economy a lot better. And the way we're going to do that is by prioritizing things like Shemps and Amulets. So right at the gate here, we're going to do Shemps Plus because this will make it so our Shemps Cola heals for more. Now, how much does the Shemps heal for? About 450. <laughs> I went ahead before the video and did some pixel measuring. I got about 450 on a Shemps. Okay, so what that means is if you have 30% more healing, that means that you're gonna get an extra about 135 healing per Sheps, which is quite a bit of extra healing, especially when you consider characters have like 900 HP at base when they are a hunter or a support, 1,000 for a leader and 1,300 for a warrior. And now in the case of Cheryl, she's gonna get even more because of her level 25 skill. So she's gonna have 550 per Sheps and then she can go ahead and run through the 30% and after all that, she's going to be healing even more. And on the theme of having a lot of resources and making sure we're resource efficient, we're going to come down here and take a look at deep pockets for our amulets and also deep pockets for our Shemp's Cola and also pack in some pop here to make it so we start with some more Shemp's Cola. Cheryl in particular is a Shemp's girl. This is what she's all about. But again, this is going to be per class. So you can throw this on any of your other supports and you'll probably do just fine. And really what this is all going to do is make it so you can just be carrying so much stuff and just constantly pushing out heals for your team in a situation where they really need them. If you get lucky early and get a lot of loot, well then holy man, you're gonna be set for the rest of the game because it is hard to drain a fully stacked Cheryl. But now what else are we gonna focus on here? One of the things I mentioned before is that your job as a support is to keep people alive, but also to stay alive. So how are we going to stay alive? The rest of the tree is all about staying alive, okay? So quite literally with staying alive, we're gonna have some extra health here. That's gonna boost your HP from 900 to something a little over a thousand for your base value and then also we're going to go into damage reduction so incoming damage is reduced when you have a shield active by 10 percent here if we put three points into it and then 10 percent here for tougher than hell so you're going to take 20 percent less damage which is a really big deal when some of these really big elite units towards the end of the game on necromancer or what have you can hit around 500 so that's a lot of hp you're saving yourself there not to mention over time that trickle of basic units that you keep seeing it's going to add up over time and then one other piece of the skill tree that i'd really like to max out for staying alive is seeing stars this is going to increase the balance bar damage from your melee attacks now personally when i play support i really like to have a sledgehammer comboed up with seeing stars because this allows you to basically one hit any basic unit with a light attack and then you can go into an f chain and what f chaining is is basically you just keep doing finishers over and over again really quickly so you are practically invincible you use an f and then you dodge and then you use an f again and this is the epitome of staying alive no matter what which is a big deal when you're support and one of the things to keep in mind when you're playing support is you're probably going to get focused a lot <laughs> because demons really like to take out the person who heals everyone. So if you're going to have yourself some damage resistance via the amulets and then also tougher than hell, on top of the fact that you can F chain using seeing stars, this will make it so if you do take damage, it's less, but frankly, you're just gonna be invincible most of the time during your fighting because you can just keep F chaining with an F and then a dodge and F and then a dodge and F and then a dodge. You're gonna be such a pain in the butt to deal with when you are playing support. In terms of what I'd prioritize first on my healer, I like to focus on getting the inventory up right away just so you can hold a lot of stuff because the worst feeling is when you waste resources that you could have picked up anyway. And then I'd start going into things like getting a little bit more Shemps Plus. But then after that, what I would do is I'd probably try to make it so I can get Seeing Stars maxed out so that I can F chain and then go into Shemps Plus and then go into our damage resistance. Now let's move on to the Hunter class here. And I think I have my half set up for this video. And the main idea is to take what you're good at and make it better. So what is the Hunter class really good at? They're really good at range damage and they're really good at stamina and dodging. So that's exactly what we're gonna focus on here. It's not gonna be too complicated. So 
What we're going to do is we're going to go big into hollow points here just for the 25% range damage. I also have a little bit here into balance bar damage because this is a balance bar meta right now. If there's anything you could do to reduce the balance bar of whatever you're hitting, you're in a good spot. Another big one we have here is Fear No Evil. The reason why I'm putting three points into Fear No Evil is because fear is a big problem <laughs> for a hunter. The reason being is that the hunter tends to carry the really strong weapon of the team, like the legendary shotgun or the legendary crossbow or the anything big scary weapon. So, if you get possessed, you can very quickly wipe out your whole team on accident. So you want to do what you can to make that not happen. So, Fear No Evil is a really, really nice to have when you are playing Hunter. Scrolling down the tree here, we're also going to focus on things like Staying Power to get you a lot more stamina. And then also Artful Dodger. Between these two, <laughs> that demon's never going to catch you. No matter how hard he tries. And trust me, he's going to try. A foolish demon is going to go ahead and try to catch a hunter. And if you can get that to happen, if you can try to make the demon try to mess with you and hunt you down, oh my goodness. It is such a boon for your team because you can waste their day all day. You have so much stamina. And frankly, by the time you start reaching a point where your stamina might be in jeopardy, you've probably already reached a window or a railing that you can vault over and then they can't even reach you anyway. It's, it's a great problem to have if the demon's chasing after your hunter. We also have Last Chance in here. Last Chance is a really nice skill because what it does is it increases the damage dealt by the last bullet in your gun. So this means things like a Blunderbuss and a Crossbow are just going to get a native bonus. But also a lot of the guns in this game that a hunter tends to focus on tend to be low magazine weapons. So like a Boomstick or a Double Barrel. So this means that very often you are just getting a giant damage boost of 30%. And then personally, I like to run Deadly up close because I do play with a lot of shotguns and you just want to be close with a shotgun anyway. Not to mention if you're close, there's less of a chance you're going to miss. <laughs> so I like to go Deadly up close and then just really smack them with a shotgun. Now, some people might be wondering, well, what about Lone Wolf and Devastating Force? Personally, I don't use them, but also if I were to play Kelly, I might consider it a bit more since she's a bit more of a melee hunter combo. So again, this is... This is a template that you can throw on anyone and it's going to work well, but please go ahead and experiment with what works with your own play style or what might work a little bit better with your specific character because the characters do change and they are a little bit different and they have their own sets of abilities. But what I'm providing with you today is something that will work on all of them, but you can fine tune it if you want. Like another example of that might be something like with Ed here. Ed really likes his crossbow due to his crossbow mastery, so you might want to consider putting a little bit more into deadly from a distance rather than deadly up close. But deadly up close is still going to work really well on Ed because you could still pick up a shotgun. That kind of idea. In terms of what I'd prioritize first on the hunter, I would actually go ahead and focus on stamina because being able to waste time and stay alive, I think is more important than getting a little bit more DPS out. I know the hunter's big DPS character, but they're going to have that anyway due to their pink F tree. So try to make it so that you are just really hard to take down. Now let's move on to the warriors here. <laughs> what is so good specifically with Army of Darkness Ash here, but the Warriors in general, is that they are just hard to take down. It's a similar thing that the Hunters have, where you don't want to really focus the Warrior first if you're the Demon, because the Warriors and the Hunters will just waste your time because they're so hard to take down. But now, what are the Warriors really good at? They are good at shields, and they are good at melee damage, and they just have a lot of HP. So, let's try to make it so that they're really hard to take down because they're going to focus on shields and HP. Well, let's make them even tankier. So, with that in mind... We're going to put some points in a reinforced amulet. I didn't put four points in, and I'll explain why in a little bit here. But we're going to put some points in a reinforced amulet, and then we're also going to put some points into Season Survivor Basic, because what this does is it reduces the damage taken from possessed basic units. This one's a really big deal. That's 13% that you're taking off of what is the most prominent strategy in the game right now for a demon. Most really successful demons are basic unit rushing you. So if you can make it so that basic units just start doing way less damage, that's a big deal. And then also, we're going to go ahead and find wherever the heck it is, tougher than hell right here, to make it so that all said and done here, we have, what, 10%, 13%, 10%. So that's going to be, what, 33% reduced damage from the most powerful thing that's going to be tossed at you in the game, which is a possessed basic unit. So that is really nice. And then if you factor in <laughs> Ash here, when he uses his Q ability... He's actually going to go ahead and reduce that by another 50%. So he's taking 83% reduced damage. Basically, he's not taking damage. And it lasts for 30 seconds. So this is really nice on old Ash here. And then on the topic of being hard to take down, I actually went ahead, thought about this, and tested some stuff. I put some points into Artful Dodger. The reason why I put three points into Artful Dodger is this reason. 
if you go ahead and you have a warrior unit, they're really bad at stamina. <laughs> so they only get one dodge per stamina bar. That's it. Unless you put some points into Artful Dodger. Now, if you put one point into Artful Dodger, you will be able to get two dodges out of your warrior once you max out their pink Fs. And I think they can get two pink Fs in their stamina tree. All right? Now, if you go three points into Artful Dodger, you're still only going to get a max of two dodges. However, you're going to get those two dodges at the beginning of the game. You can go dodge, dodge. You don't have to put any points in with your pink app. And if you have these two, three points into Artful Dodger, once you do max out your pink app on stamina, you can get those two dodges in. And then very shortly after, you can get a third dodge in. So with that in mind, again, one of the biggest pain points for a warrior is their stamina. So by being able to dodge a lot more and have a lot more freedom with your dodging, I think this opens up a lot of avenues for you to really just be a tanky mess to deal with for the demon. Because not only are you going to be able to have a lot of shields going, have a lot of damage resistance, and now get some good dodging in, you're also going to be really good at F-chaining because your balance bar damage is going to be insane with a warrior. Because we can go into Seeing Stars here, which is 25% for your Balance Bar. We could also go Blunt Force Trauma, which increases the Balance Bar damage from Blunt Weapons. And that's going to include things like your Bat or the best weapon for Balance Bar damage in the game, the Sledgehammer. And then also we can put more into our Balance Bar damage here with something like Stunning Strikes, which increases it from Heavy Melee Attacks. The way I build up my Warrior is you're going to be hard to take me down and I'm going to knock you out. And I think that's always done me really, really well. Now... In the case of mixing this up a little bit, let's say you're playing Scotty, or let's say you're playing Ash here, and you want to use your proficiency with the Chainsaw or the Lumberjack Axe. In that case, what you might consider doing is removing a little bit of this right here, and then going into Cutting Blows and going into a little bit more Dismemberment here. All right? Or, if you really want to, what you can do is take a little bit out here, and then really go into dismemberment and try to cut off some arms. Because if a demon doesn't have its arms, it really can't use a lot of its abilities, which means that it's going to just be sitting there wobbling like a little fish. Now, I do believe this is a balance bar meta. We did do a lot of testing with the dismemberment stuff, and I wasn't really that big of a fan. So personally, I still like to go ahead and put my stats into balance bar damage with things like heavy attacks. Now, if you're not going to be using a blunt force weapon, then go ahead and put it really wherever else you want in the tree here. That could be putting a point into dismemberment. It could even be putting a bit more into the damage resistance here so you get that extra 2% and then an extra 5% on your HP. Okay? Whichever works for you. In terms of what I'd prioritize first on a warrior, it's probably going to be the balance bar damage because that way you can F-chain and that unlocks invincibility for you right away. But then as soon as you can, start getting some damage reduction in there. Okay? And then finally, leader here. And leader, I feel, has the most ability to express them however you want because there's a bunch of different ways to play these dudes. One way I really like to play them, which I don't have listed here, is to go big into Arcane Knowledge because it is so nice to have, what, a 42 meter range on the map pieces at the beginning of the game? I love doing that. <laughs> but instead, what we're going to do is we're going to focus a bit more on the aura here because really the big thing with these leaders is that they provide these aura bonuses. I would say that, I mean, they're, they all have really good aura bonuses, frankly, but being able to have Annie's aura bonus on all the time with her balance bar effects and then also her range damage, or being able to have a bit more range for things like melee. Granted, you're going to hug Arthur pretty closely anyway if you're playing melee and you're sticking close together, but having a little bit more aura range is nice, and then a bit more aura effects constantly happening is really nice. So what we're going to do with our leader here is we're going to focus a little bit more on the aura range, have it vary depending on who your leader is, and then I'm going to spec a little bit into making it so our aura is always on. So if, if we go down for whatever reason, we'll have this as a nice to have. But more importantly, Echoes of the Aura here allows it so if somebody leaves the aura for a couple seconds, they still have it. And they come back in and they, they never lost their aura effect, which is really nice to have. And then really all we go into here, the, the leader aura tree is a little weird and doesn't have anything that's super amazing at in any direction. Really what I'm going to focus on here is just trying to stay alive. Because as long as your aura is up, you're providing benefit to the team. So you don't want to go down. So we're going to go into Tougher Than Hell here, and then also Reinforced Amulet, very similar to what we saw in a bunch of these other trees to make it so we're more tanky. But then for the damage side of things, I'm actually going to focus on Hollow Points, because I feel like you're going to DPS more with your gun than you ever would with your melee weapon when you're playing a leader. I guess, unless you're Arthur, then you might mix things around here. Which is why I'm saying that the leaders definitely have the most expression, because based on the leader you're playing, things can change a lot. 
but this will work on any of them. And a reason to go ahead and prioritize something like hollow points on a leader is that leaders are really hard to possess. They have a really high fear resistance and they have a really high fear threshold. So getting yourself a really nice ranged weapon on your leader isn't a big risk. One thing that people might wonder a lot about is your aura effect improvement. Let me talk a little bit about this one. So my presumption on how this works, we have to go ahead and get really deep into the numbers here, is your aura effect improvement is 20%, right? So that's not going to be take a 10 and then add 20 to it. It's going to be take a 10 and multiply that by a 1.2. So instead of a 10% here on damage, it's going to be a 12%. It's not going to be 30. So I think that might be a case of confusion for some folks. This is my assumption on how it would work because if it just added 20%, that wouldn't make a lot of sense. Something else to know about all of this really is a lot of these numbers are not accurate in the game right now. <laughs> so one example is if you take a look at Kelly here, it says that her ability has a duration of five seconds. It does not. It has a duration of 10. Another big example of this, probably one of the biggest examples of this is Annie. I got really excited about Annie for a while because I thought that she was just so awesome with her hit him where it hurts. Because what it says is when you activate this skill, the range damage increases for Annie and people around her by 100%. Duration's 15 seconds, cooldown's 45. It's not 100%. It's 30%. So, there's a lot of little things in this game that just are not represented accurately. And I don't know why the variables in the menu are not attached to the variables that express themselves in the game themselves. You'd think that'd make it easy for them to update these things, but apparently they didn't do it that way. So, some of these things are just not going to be accurate, and there's going to have to be a really deep dive on all of these characters to really see what's going on with all of them. I plan on doing that eventually and seeing, okay, what the heck's going on with all these numbers. It'll be in a future video. If you want to be subscribed, go ahead and sub down below so you can be tuned for whenever we get that out. But just know that some of these things are not as they seem. So that's why with a lot of these things here, I want to go ahead and say this will generally work on any of these characters. Go ahead and pick, you know, this Cheryl build down here. It'll work on all your supports. And we'll focus a bit more on really specializing each character once we really get the numbers all figured out concretely. If you have any insight of your own or any questions, please put them in the comments down below. I stream just about every single night on twitch.tv slash swingpoint. Links in the description, also the top comment. If you want to see me do one of these for demons, please let me know. I can give you a little bit of insight on how I build out each demon, because each demon is very different. Something to know about these survivors is a support tree is the same for all of them. A hunter tree is the same for all the hunters. Warriors the same for all the warriors. Leaders the same for all the leaders, but each demon here is very different. So if you want to see that, please let me know in the comments down below, and please subscribe if you want to see that in the future. And with that, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next video that we do around here.